Hi everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Co. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, today something very different that I haven't done before, which is a collaboration. I was invited to do a collabor collaboration with Rach and Bella Crafts. Um, this is the kit that we'll be using, which is the Summer Bloom Collection. Uh, celebration, sorry. And uh, we're asked to use this kit to um, create some wonderful, fun, exciting projects. Um, so I was assigned the letter M. They hand out the letter. Uh, the collaboration is actually called A to Z of Inspirational Summer Crafts Collection. So I was assigned the letter M. And one of the things that we're uh, asked to do in the collaboration is to find inspiration from a previous YouTuber that we've watched or watched. In my case, I still watch her. Um, that inspired us to... Uh, take an idea they had and reinvent it or uh, redo it in our own fashion. And uh, so the YouTuber that I picked uh, that inspires me the most is Nick the Booksmith. Um, I love her work. I find her stuff very professional. Uh, she's very organized and very neat, which is the, the opposite end of the spectrum of how I work. So I find that very inspiring how um, other people can work in such an organized way. And her results are very, very professional looking, which I try to aspire to. So uh, one of my favorite videos of hers is uh, this uh, accordion style press flower journal that she's done. Um, and I think she gets the idea out of a book. And I'll make sure to link her and the collaboration and all the details um, in the description box. Um, so I'm going to show you what I decided to do for the letter M, which is a mini um, masterboard flower press. So I really love pressing flowers. I, I really love being outdoor in the garden. And uh, she, like I said, she does a version of this. It's bigger and obviously much neater and more professional than me. But uh, the idea behind it is this really cute little book that you can take with you. It's portable. You're using up scraps and uh, you press flowers in it. And uh, I thought this was really cute. And it's an accordion style. So you get you get both sides, right? So here's some flowers that I've pressed in this one, which I really love. So we are going to build that today. So mini, let me say it right, mini masterboard flower press. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you are going to need um, some heavy duty, uh, what's this called, board. Uh, this is off the backing of my actual uh, watercolor paper pad. So I just recycled the back of it and I have cut it into um, five by 3.5 inches. I don't know what that is in centimeters, sorry. Even though I'm Canadian, I still use inches <laughs> and uh, we're going to cut, let's see how many did I cut here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to cut eight of those by five inches by 3.5 inches. And then you're going to cut the paper, which is a cheap watercolor paper. Now you, you don't have to use watercolor paper, but you, you want to use something that absorbs. I don't recommend paper towel because paper towel is textured and it leaves that imprint on the flower. Um, but you do want to use a type of paper that is absorbent. So mixed media paper would work, blotting paper would work, and in my case, a cheap watercolor paper, which is the, the backing here. So you can see I've used quite a bit of it. And you're going to cut the papers for this size. You're going to cut them four inches, four, sorry, 4.5 inches by three inches so that they fit neatly inside the book. And you're gonna need two per section. So in this case, I did two, sorry, I can't remember. Three, four, five, six, seven. Jeez, you think I would have had this ready. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Hopefully that's right. So 12, so you have basically two in between each of these folds. So 
I went ahead and did a bunch of these ahead of time so that the video is not 100 hours long. I'm going to keep the video about half an hour long because there's a lot of collaborators on this, as you can imagine, the whole alphabet. And there's some fantastically talented people in this um, collaboration. So I'll make sure to link that at the in the description and then you can um, check them all out and see what everybody's inspired, who people are inspired by. So... For the, uh, I like to decorate them. It just makes a really nice little result in the end, um, as opposed to keeping them plain. And it's a really fun way to use up scraps. So in my case, uh, I cut up the the uh, Summer Blooms collection. They weren't my scraps, but I turned them into scraps. But it is a good way to use scraps. Um, and now I'm gonna glue them down. So what I did was, I'm just gonna get a little more organized here. What I did was I, just slice them up in random sizes. And then I went with my vintage photo, distressed oxide, and I darkened the edges. And the reason I do that is when they overlay in a master board, each section pops because it's got a, a nice rich border on the edge, which separates it from the color underneath. And I'll show you what that means in a second. So I went ahead and did a bunch of these because I again, I don't want the video to be too long. And I keep an envelope with my scraps. So if you're doing, if you have a digital collection and you've used sections of it, this is a great way to organize your scraps. So say one day you're busy wanting to be creative and nothing's coming to mind. Sometimes doing the prep work like this is a great way to um, be creative without producing a project but preparation for future projects and then I just take these once I've inked them and I throw them in an envelope and then they're ready to go so let's have some fun here so what I want to do is I just basically want to they're all white glue them down and I'm just going to throw some glue on and I'm going to stick these down and these digital papers are really quite beautiful. They have a, a nice range, but they're also kind of right up my alley with these neutral tones, which is what I like to work with. It kind of, again, has that really pretty vintage vibe that uh, appeals to me. So I was really excited to use these kits. And I'm just going to throw glue on. So you can see how the edging of the ink really separates the two papers and that's um that really kind of gives these these master boards some depth here let's see and i just i don't oh, try not to overthink it i just want to glue and have fun with the paper i don't want to uh, stress about how it looks in the end it's really just using textures and layers and having some fun with it. So I'm just gonna glue this down. I'll do another one here. Move that out of the way for a second. We'll do this one. And so it is, you know, one of the great things about YouTube is how you can be inspired by other artists see something they've produced. So in my case, uh, Nick the Booksmith's uh, flower press and then recreate it in a different way. So in this case, I'm using, like I said, scraps, um, but you can use all kinds of different things. I think she used fabric in hers. You have to go check it out because um, her level of professionalism is really awesome. Like I, I really love her work. And she's very talented, like her, um, the way she uh, can bind books and things. Just she clearly has that as a, a career, I would imagine, where she takes people's books and fixes them like a really old book and knows exactly how they were built back in the day and can, and can fix it. Restore it, I should say. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry for a second while I clip the edges of this. So I just take my scissors that are pretty sticky. I need to wipe them. Just clean up the edges. And then I want to make sure that all my edges around are 
are glued properly. Just take that extra second to make sure. And, and then I'm going to ink around the outer edge. Just to see that it's not stuck, so we wanna make sure it's stuck. ink around the outer edge just to make all the color palette cohesive and I apologize if it's got a lot of shadow in here it's very early in the morning I wanted to uh, film this before I went to work make sure I have the video ready to up and go on my scheduled date all right so that's that one you can clip this one and then there's another sheet here that I wanted to use is it just another way of using up these oh, sticky <laughs> using up these um, digital kits so I have a piece of uh, another piece here left over where did I put it now here it is which I thought was really pretty and the fact that it's it's already layered um, has that look we're after without having to cut and do all the um, prep work so let's let's try one of these sheets and then I'll show you a couple of those boards already finished what they look like so you can just throw that on like that stick it around the edges I mean you can even varnish fresh pressed flowers right into these as well it's all about using up what you've got what inspires you with these kits. And there we go. So you still have that kind of stuck together segments and it was twice as fast because it's already done for you in that kit. So that's kind of nice. It's gonna darken the edge here. And then we'll show you real quick. And then we're gluing these together. So here's some of the ones that we just did. I like that. I think I'll do that for the cover. And then again, just using these kits, sticking them down. And we've created some really pretty little boards. So this one here, for example, was just a sheet on its own. I thought it was so pretty. I just left it without cutting it up. All right, so now we have to assemble the book. So what we wanna do is create kind of folders. Put this glue away. So it's gonna get messy, so I'll move these, put them in my envelope for another time. All right, so we want to glue these together. So what she does is she takes some fabric. Now the fabric is an inch by just over five and a half inches. I think it's five and three quarters inches. I don't like to cut them too short um, because I end up making them too short. So I like to uh, just kind of cut things a little longer than necessary and then trim them up later. So I'm just using this tacky glue. I probably should have pre-stuck some of these because this might take a while so maybe we'll just do three or four just so I can show you the process and then we just stick them down so like Nick the booksmith she's very organized so she has like a measurement in between she puts like a, a square dowel in there to make sure everything lines up perfectly and then there's me just going to move that to the side for a second, hopefully, without disturbing it. Should really press it. I mean, not prepared for that, but anyways. We'll just move that to the side and we'll do the next one. And that's a lot of glue. I, I would have used the um, super fast glue. Can't think of the name of it right now. The What's that stuff called? It's like a three-in-one. It's much faster, but I don't have any left. 
So I have to use this tacky glue, which takes a little longer to dry. It's still good glue. It's just for video purposes, it's nice to use a fast glue, drying glue. And I'm using quite a bit, so it will take a little longer to dry than usual. But you gotta use what you got. So, just painting all the way up here. I'm trying to make sure I get the glue where I need it on the ends. Let's do the one side, flip it over, and then stick the other one. Yeah, her table's like really neat and organized. <laughs> I love it. One day, one day I might get there, but it just doesn't seem to be my style. Ooh. As you can see, I'm very messy. But that's okay. That's kind of who I am. This here and flip. Oh, no, don't need to flip. And then this. So you can see what these do is create that nice edge. So I'll bring them back here just to make sure they're gluing okay. And again, these are pretty wet. Like I said, I probably would have used a different glue for the video. The three in one or the super tacky. Um, What's the word I'm trying to think of? I can't think. It's too early in the morning. Um, acetone. Acetone-based glue is what I would use for this. Okay, so there we go. So now we want to assemble the next section, which will be this here. So we're, we put the two that are glued down, and now we're going to glue one on top here. I think I might be short one piece of fabric by the looks of it. I might have made more, more squares than I did in my original. Let's see. And thread this in here. And then throw this on here. And shove that into the seam allowance that we want, which is about an eighth of an inch give or take. Don't need it too thick, a seam allowance. Let's just flip it over, it's easier. Um, you just wanna make sure that the, the width of the board on either side has enough room to fold in on itself. So I'd say about an eighth of, the, an, eighth of the, an eighth of an inch between. I'm going to fold this up because it's starting to dry and they're not sticking. Now, if you don't wanna use fabric, you can use uh, tape can use a heavy duty packing tape to, to make these hinges. See how they're not sticking well, but that's just because of the glue I chose. So I'm just gonna flip these before they all dry. Work with me, work with me. Put the weight on there. Yeah, I only have the one fabric strip left, so let's maybe try some tape so you can see what I mean by the tape. If I can find the end, that's always the fun of packing tape. Haha, -ha, got it. So you can do a packing tape end. I'm gonna find my inside seam here. <laughs> the glue is just taking too long to dry. All right, let's try that again. Did I glue? I put glue inside there. All right, let's try it one more time. So again, two side, two angles down, the two inside seams. So there's one, and there's one, and now we're going to stick these two together. So what we will do is we'll just use some packing tape. And we'll stick that down. And the packing tape you can use both sides because it's thin. And it's a great uh, adhesive for hinging. 
because it's pretty instant, unlike this glue. That does not want to cooperate for me today. Should have probably just done it with the tape. I thought I had that three in one, but when I went to open it, it had completely solidified. So I guess it wasn't fully closed and it dried out. So, or evaporated, I should say, with the um, acetone. So you can see the, the tape works just as well for a hinge. So hopefully I can get these to cooperate a little more. And we'll do one more hinge here. Let's just use more tape. I think you get the idea with the with between the fabric and the um so the fabric here if I'm not off screen so the if you're going to use another piece of fabric this fabric would be on the inside because you can use the fabric on both sides but then it gets kind of bulky and we don't want it bulkier than necessary so this tape is a really great way to hinge I use the uh, tape like this a lot when I'm building lap books. It's very strong and again it's it doesn't create bulk. But she used fabric to hinge hers so I wanted to use fabric in mine. All right. Do one more piece here. And then we'll trim up the fabric. Hopefully it's dry enough to maneuver. You can even leave the fabric coming off the ends. It's kind of cool too. Doesn't bother me. What did I do here now? No. Why is that folding? Did I not leave enough room? And so I might've done the tape too tight there. See the hinge is too close together, so I have to stretch the tape to close it. There we go. Live and learn, right? And I like the rough edges. I like frayed bits and things like that. I like it to look worn. So this one is not sticking well, so I'm going to remove this because it's not cooperating. And I clearly didn't think that part through when it came to the glue and how long this video needs to be. But that's okay. Tape saved the day. So I'm going to put some tape on here and make sure I do leave at least an eighth of an inch. And you'll see the difference between my video and make the book smiths and how really organized and neat and tidy her stuff is and that's why it's fun to watch so many different youtubers and kind of see what inspires you and not that i'm ever going to work neat and tidy like she does it's just it's not in my nature to be that organized but it's still fun to watch somebody who has their act together like that. I'm going to have to get rid of this bag too. It's very sticky. All right. Okay. My scissors are even dirty now. I don't know if it's been filming in this trailer that's throwing me off my game so much. And I'm not as organized as I think I am. Clean up my scissors. But still producing results, right? All right, look at my fingers covered in glue. That's when you know you're having fun. Okay, so I think the hinges, the fabric hinges are dried. They're a little tacky. And look, I did all the other side in tape. So you can see that actually works out well then. So you can see how the taped ends look and how using fabric ends look. So the fabric ends have a little bit more of a, a nicer polished look, um, but still you, it's just as effective to use tape 
And I mean, you can even take another piece now of, of um, scrap and glue right over the tape if you wanted to, just to hide those edges if you don't like them. So that's fun. Just learning something new every time. All right, so now that we've got our book assembled, we're gonna put our paper in. So as you can see, it is an accordion style. That was the goal. So we're gonna open it up and put our first two pages in there. So obviously you wanna wait till the glue is for sure dry. So you don't want any glue on your paper. You want it to absorb the moisture from the flowers. And that's the whole point of this paper. The, the more moisture, the better quality absorbent paper that you use, the faster the uh, flowers will dry and the neater and flatter they will dry. So right now I'm just gonna open the other side. I love these little accordion books. They're just so much fun to play with. And I think what I did was add an extra piece because I'm two pieces short. So I think I added two extra boards just in case I screwed up and then I ended up covering them anyways. Okay, so let's put some flowers in. So I went out this morning and I do recommend you pick flowers to press later in the day, not first thing in the morning because they have extra moisture on them. So the least amount of moisture, the better. And here is a, so you can see there's a little bit of dew on them still. Uh, this is from a smoke bush and uh, they turn a really lovely kind of purple in the fall. I just bought it and I really love it. So it's, I just love the veining in that. I'd actually really like to try some eco dyeing with this just cause they're so pretty. And you just put them between the paper. And here is some, let's do some fern. So a little bit of fern. Let me just cut a few of these off. So this book is very small, obviously. It's not for a huge collection. There's another style of fern. Um, but it's it's more about like kind of traveling and having um, if you're you know visiting a friend and she's got some really lovely stuff in the garden. Oh look, I've got a little visitor. You came in my trailer off the oh, <laughs> little garden spider look. Anyways, um, if you have uh, some friends, you stay there because you're going back outside. Oh no, you stay there. I'm just gonna close him in for a second because I don't want him in my trailer um, and you have a really lovely uh, friend's garden and stuff that that uh, with flowers that you haven't seen before this is kind of a really fun little uh, way to preserve them so some clover and I believe this is phlox all right so I'm just going to close this up hopefully he doesn't get out so I do not want him in my trailer and then you can find a ribbon or something that you like. So I have a pink ribbon. I have some white seam binding. And you're basically just gonna tie your book off. So this is about a meter long, this ribbon. Oh, he's making a run for it. And I just tie around and tie around and squeeze the book down as best I can and tie it off in a bow so that I can undo it later. And then I come check on it in a week and tie it a little tighter. So there it is. Where'd he go? There he is, he's hiding on me. Hope you don't mind spiders. <laughs> Some people don't like them. They don't bother me. And so there we go. There is our uh, little mini Masterboard flower press. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you check out all the other collaborators and all their beautiful work that they're producing. And I hope uh, they inspire you to uh, want to create your very own fun ideas and kind of spin off and take the ideas and do your very own thing with them, which is uh, a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed that today. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more and we'll see you again soon. Okay, everyone. Take care. Bye.